Good evening and welcome to our Education Awards Night. The 130th Continental Congress is reconvened. We will begin with the opening rituals that will formally open this evening's session of the virtual 130th Continental Congress. We begin with an invocation provided by Pamela Peterson Bork, Chaplain General. Mrs. Bork. Madam President General, tonight's scripture is from Philippians 4, verse 8. Finally, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Please pray in your faith and tradition as I pray in mine, and let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we gather tonight to celebrate education and the accomplishments of our youth, the teachers who guide them, and our outstanding juniors. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the intelligence and scholarship, caring and energy, determination and enthusiasm with which you have gifted these people. We ask a special blessing for the families, teachers, and chapters who have supported them on this journey. Continue, we pray, to hold them close, grant them wisdom, courage, and discernment as they go on to be the leaders of tomorrow. Amen. Please rise and join with me to recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Let us next together recite the American's Creed and then sing the first verse of our national anthem. I believe in the United States of America as a government of the people, by the people, for the people, whose just powers are derived from the consent of the governed, a democracy and a republic, a sovereign nation of many sovereign states, a perfect union, one and inseparable, established upon those principles of freedom, equality, justice, and humanity for which American patriots sacrifice their lives and fortunes. I therefore believe it is my duty to my country to love it, to support its constitution, to obey its laws, to respect its flag, and to defend it against all enemies. And now you may be seated. This evening we celebrate achievements in education, one of the primary objectives established at the founding of our National Society in 1890. That is to carry out the injunction of Washington in his farewell address to the American people, quote, to promote as an object of primary importance institutions for the general diffusion of knowledge, thus developing an enlightened 
public opinion. One of the most rewarding and visible ways that DAR chapters have long engaged students and educators is by conducting our annual American History Essay Contest, which began in 1956 and is conducted in thousands of communities every year. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the National Vice Chair of the American History Committee to present the national winners of this year's DAR American History Essay Contest. Welcome, Allie Dunklin. Madam President General, we have a wonderful group of national winners this year, and our national judges thoroughly enjoyed reading all of these entertaining essays. Our first judge, Kathy Van Deventer, is from Bel Air, Texas. Our second judge, Dr. Sam Zarabi, hails from Los Angeles, California. And our final judge, Bailey Damschroeder, is from Stevensville, Maryland. Now, it is my honor to introduce the 2021 national winners. Our fifth grade winner is Kellen Moore of Presbyterian Day School in Kosciuszko, Mississippi. Kellen's favorite subjects are science and history. He is especially interested in the history of early Greek and Roman culture. His hobbies include reading, fishing, hunting, and playing local sports. In the future, Kellen hopes to become a veterinarian with a concentration in marine animal studies. His parents, Michael and Kristen Moore, his older brother, Rylan, and his younger sister, Emerson, are very proud of this honor student. Together, they live in Carthage, Mississippi, and Kellen is an active member of the Rocky Point Baptist Church. Kellen is sponsored by the Samuel Hammond Chapter of Kosciuszko, Mississippi, State Regent Helen Polk. Hi, I am Kellen Moore, American History Essay National Winner for the fifth grade. I humbly accept this award from the Daughters of the American Revolution National Society. I would like to thank my local DAR, the Samuel Hammond Chapter, for choosing my essay to compete at a higher level. I was excited to write an essay about one of my favorite events in American history, the Boston Mastery, which pushed American patriots closer to fighting for freedom. I have been asked to share a portion of my essay, The Boston Massacre, The Spark, The United Nation, with you. I hope you enjoy hearing it as much as I enjoyed writing it. When I got to my room, I was curious what my parents were saying, so I pressed my ear to the door. I heard Dad say, I was afraid this would happen. The riots have been going on for weeks. Ever since King George and his parliament have been raising the taxes and not allowing us to trade, the people have become angry and more restless. Rom replied, I know the British are not going to want the news to get out of Boston, but Postmaster General Franklin's Night Riders will have the news out to all the colonies by morning. After hearing my parents' discussion, I thought to myself, I don't think the other colonies respond well to the horrific conflict that took place tonight. I believe the violent events of the night will be the spark that starts the fire of America's freedom from England. Then I looked at George and my younger brother and realized he will grow up in a completely different America than I have. Thank you all for this amazing honor. I wish I was able to escape the war in person and meet everyone, but I understand the current circumstances make it impossible. Please know that I am grateful and wish you all the best. God bless you. And Our sixth grade national winner is Thomas Pelothy of Classical Conversation School in Pennsylvania. Thomas enjoys reading about historical fiction and his favorite subject in school is history. This adventurous Boy Scout loves visiting national forts and was excited that he recently had the pleasure of visiting Fort Niagara. In addition to school studies and history, Thomas loves playing golf, drawing, and riding his bike. Thomas is sponsored by the Kush Kush Key Trail chapter of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, State Regent Elizabeth Ann Walker Watkins. First of all, I would like to thank the Daughters of the American Revolution for helping me learn more about my favorite subject, which is history. In my essay, I'm a British soldier writing to his mom. Dearest mother, I am writing to you in great distress. The colonists accept certain taxes as important duties, but taxes just to raise some money for the crown, like the Stamp Act and the Townsend Act, are rightly opposed since they are imposed without colonial and consent. The British crown needs money to support its troops and doesn't care what price the colonies have to pay. No wonder then that the city of Boston is like a tinderbox. 
Uh, recently, a young boy was shot by a loyalist. Thousands of Bostonians shouted to his funeral. The leader of the Sons of Liberty, Sam Adams, organized and paid for the event. You know, the man who shot the boy was let go. When a people have lost all confidence in government, it is vain to expect a cordial obedience to it. I, too, have lost my faith, and so I have resigned from His Majesty's 29th Regiment. There is a revolution coming to be reckoned with. Your loving son, Edwin. Our seventh grade winner is Samuel Longhurst of Challenger School, Traverse Mountain Campus. Sam lives in South Jordan, Utah, with his parents, Talia and Byron, and his older brother, Mason, who was actually the eighth grade national winner last year. Also like his older brother, Sam has participated every year in the essay contest and has won at the state and chapter level each year. This is his first year to win at the national level, and coincidentally, this year's topic has been his favorite so far. In addition to reading and playing video games, Sam enjoys his involvement with the student council and the school robotics team. He has won many academic awards in math, art, and science. Sam is sponsored by the Wasatch Range Chapter of Provo, Utah, State Regent Catherine Assay. Hello, my name is Sam Longhurst. I live in South Jordan, Utah. I attend Challenger School, Travers Mountain Campus. I am the 2021 7th grade national winner of the DAR American History Essay Contest. Thank you for this award. I will have really enjoyed researching and writing the DAR essays. My favorite so far is this year's topic of the Boston Massacre. I always try to find a way to make this historical event relatable to me personally. This year, I chose to write from the perspective of Christopher Sider's family. Christopher Sider was an 11-year-old boy who was considered to be the first victim of the Boston Massacre. He was shot during a protest against a town grocer who supported England. Christopher's funeral became a political event, which increased the tensions that erupted into the Boston Massacre. Here's an excerpt from my essay. As Mother looked out the window at the dark, cold night, she noticed the tall, majestic elm tree, known as the Liberty Tree, across the street from our house. Liberty is a great and splendid thing. Each year, flowers bloom on the elm branches. The blooms fall to the ground, and sometimes the seeds sprout into new trees. This Boston massacre has shaken the tree of liberty, and the seeds have fallen. The seeds of revolution and independence. They will grow. These colonies will grow and be free. Father stood up and yawned. He walked over to Mother and gave her a hug. Thomas Paine once said, If there must be trouble, let it be in my day, that my children may have peace. Our son Christopher was the first martyr in the growing revolution against the crown. There will be many more. I hope he will rest in peace. I wish for peace for all my children, now and forever. Come, Sophia, let us all go to bed. Now, we'll talk more tomorrow, and I assure you, tomorrow will come, whatever it may be. I am so honored to be recognized for this award, and I thank all of you who provide the opportunity to learn about our nation's great history. I am sad that we could not meet in person in this year, but I wish for health and safety for all of us. Thank you. Our eighth grade national winner is Kaylee Poole of the Prescott School District in Prescott, Arkansas. She is a member of the Curly Wolves cheer team, as well as the basketball and track teams. In addition to hanging out with her friends, Kaylee would like to further her education at the University of Arkansas, majoring in sports medicine. Kaylee is the daughter of Robert and Chady Poole and is sponsored by the Benjamin Culp chapter of Prescott, Arkansas, State Regent Gretchen Alice McGee. I'm Robert Poole, Superintendent of the Prescott School District, and we're here today to present this award to Kaylee Poole, who is a national winner of the eighth grade DAR essay. And at this time, I present this award to Kaylee Poole and her appreciation for the Preston School District and the state of Arkansas for representing us as our national winner. So Kaylee, congratulations. And thank you for representing us and here's your award. Thank you very much. And Kaylee would also like to read a paragraph of our uh, essay that she wrote. And Kaylee, at this time, we'll turn it to you. Um, I'm reading this paragraph because it shows how intense the situation really was and how um, much of a need it was for us to get away from the British and 
and it eventually led to our freedom. The first thing we did when we got home was lock our doors. We didn't want anything to do with the British and sure didn't want to be the next ones killed. My dad decided our family was going on lockdown. He was the only one allowed to leave our house because my mom and I couldn't protect ourselves against the British soldiers. Mother had a panic attack and was in tears because she knew that no patriot was safe. Both of my parents agreed that I should go to sleep and get some rest after the night I had, but I couldn't. I was traumatized, after all. I decided to eavesdrop on my parents' discussion about this bloody mess. They talked about how the Sons of Liberty were going to rebel until we gained our freedom from Britain. My dad said this was the start of a rebellion. The British just didn't know what they had gotten themselves into. Mama said that she knew the colonists would not let the British get away with what they did. It made our hatred for Britain ten times worse. Stuff was about to go down and there is no way either side was going to back off. Congratulations to Kellen, to Thomas, to Sam, and Kately too. Thank you for your excellent essays and for your interest in American history. Thank you as well to our chair, Mrs. Dunklin. I'm also so very grateful to all of the chapter chairs who conduct this contest on the local level year after year. It can be both challenging and rewarding to do so, but it is so very important. Great job. Our members so often serve in myriad ways without ever expecting any kind of recognition. After all, we are DAR members and that's just what we do. But it certainly is sweet when those we support take time to demonstrate their gratitude for our work. Here now are students from the Kate Duncan Smith DAR School in Grant, Alabama, expressing their appreciation to all of our members for our work around the world, but especially in their corner of it. Well, wasn't that fun? We thank those adorable students for their expression of gratitude and KDS Administrator Heather Green for supplying that video. We hope that those young singers will carry with them lessons about citizenship for the rest of their lives as a result of our involvement at their school. It was nearly 90 years ago that our National Society established the DAR Good Citizen Award to recognize outstanding young people at the high school level for their civic engagement. To announce the 2021 DAR Good Citizens of the Year, please welcome Catherine McClellan, National Chair of the DAR Good Citizens Committee. Kathy. Madam President General, the DAR Good Citizens Committee is honoring two scholarship winners this year. These two students were chosen from over 3,500 high school seniors who were selected as local winners. All of our participants exemplify the qualities of leadership, service, dependability, and patriotism. Our female winner is Catherine Dion of Stony Point, New York, and she is sponsored by the Anna Smith Strong Chapter. Catherine is a self-proclaimed STEM girl. She has attended summer institutes at the Brookhaven National Laboratory at John Hopkins, and she was named a Garcia Research Student. Catherine also is a volunteer at the Long Island State Veterans Home, and she's a competitive dancer also. Catherine will be attending Princeton University to pursue an engineering degree. Hello to the 130th Continental Congress. My name is Catherine Tian, and I'm this year's female national DAR Good Citizen. I am a senior at Ward Novel High School and will be attending Princeton University in the fall. I am honored to be receiving this award and would just like to thank my local Anna Smith Strong Chapter 
on Long Island, New York for sponsoring me. I would also like to give a special thanks to my high school guidance counselor, Mr. Jane, for nominating me for this award, as well as Sarah Gutman from the DAR for reaching out to Mr. Jane. Lastly, without the support from my friends, family, and teachers, I would not be where I am today. So I would just like to thank them as well. The DAR Good Citizen Award was created in 1934 to recognize the qualities of a good citizen. No one is born a good citizen. It is through dependability, service, leadership, and patriotism that one can be deemed a good citizen for their country. Dependability means that you are trustworthy, that you are reliable. Service suggests you are an active member and giving back to your community. Leadership entails that you are leading by example and looking out for the people before yourself. Patriotism implies a sense of solidarity and love for your country, which brings people together. One of the main criteria to be a good citizen is service, and no one would be a better example of this service than the veterans who sacrificed so much for our country. Through my time volunteering at the Long Island State Veterans Home, I was able to get a glimpse of what good service looks like by listening to the stories of the veterans there. I came to the realization that to be a good citizen means giving back to your community. So that's what I strive to do when creating my own automatic non-contact fever detector. I kept seeing nurses taking people's temperatures with a fever gum and kind of realized that it was difficult to automatically check a person's temperature in a public place without a dedicated nurse or healthcare worker. So that's why I created this device to automatically take a person's temperature and to give back to my community, I donated some to my local veterans home where I first learned the meaning of what good service was. My journey with engineering is why I chose to major in engineering in college and I plan to use my education to find problems in the world and do my best to solve them. Thank you once again to the DAR for choosing me for your scholarship and helping me get one st step closer in reaching this goal. Madam President General, our male DAR Good Citizen winner this year is Arjun Garapati of Overland Park, Kansas, and he is sponsored by the Olaf Chapter. Arjun was named a Distinguished Scholar in Science and has been a research participant at the Kansas City VA Medical Center. He also attended the Stanford Biotechnology Camp. He was a member of the Science Olympiad team, the SMART team, and the Scholars Bowl team for his high school. Arjun developed an Inclusions Connection Science class at a community center for developmentally disabled adults. At his high school, he initiated an interdisciplinary peer tutoring program. Arjun will be attending the University of California at Berkeley and is planning to pursue a double major in biochemistry and philosophy. He hopes to attain a PhD and have a career in research. Hello everyone, my name is Arjun Garpati. I am overwhelmed with gratitude to have been selected as one of this year's DAR Good Citizens Award and Scholarship recipients. Though we cannot be together in person, I'd like to thank you all for being here remotely at the 129th Continental Congress to share in this occasion. I am so honored to have my leadership efforts and service to the community recognized in this way by the Daughters of the American Revolution Good Citizens Committee. While I will always serve my community regardless of any recognition it may garner, it means so much to me that the work and ideals I am passionate about also resonate with others. This accomplishment is not something that I did alone. First, I'd like to start by thanking my grandparents. Their American dream story was my first glimpse of what being a good citizen truly means, persevering past obstacles with relentless determination. I would also like to thank my mother, father, and sister for supporting me in my journey as both a leader and a learner. Thank you to my guidance counselor, Mrs. Parison, for first nominating me for this award and putting the incredible DAR organization on my radar. And thank you to Mrs. Durbin, the Olathe Chapter NSDAR Good Citizen Chair, for her continued support for me throughout this entire process. 
She's certainly been my number one supporter, and I'm extremely thankful for all that she's done. Last but not least, I'd like to thank you, the Daughters of the American Revolution and the 129th Continental Congress, for offering recognition to young leaders like me. Your efforts have and will continue to inspire young citizens to take an active role in shaping our democracy for the better. This fall, I will be starting at the University of California at Berkeley, where I will continue my efforts to make the community a better place and look forward to promoting active, passionate, and good citizenship among my peers for many years to come. I am truly humbled and appreciative. Thank you. Congratulations, Catherine and Arjun. It's a pleasure to recognize your outstanding accomplishments and your qualities as good citizens. This award is an investment not only in your future, but also that of our nation. Thank you, Mrs. McClellan, and to all of the chapter and state chairs who recognized thousands of outstanding young people through this committee during this last difficult year. Please know how grateful we are for your continuing commitment to its important purpose. Well done indeed. Excellent students, of course, require excellent educators. It is a pleasure for me to now present Historian General Laura McCrillis Kessler, herself a retired teacher, who will announce the Outstanding Teacher of American History for the year 2021. Madam President General, lifelong learner, passionate, engaging, and knowledgeable are all words that describe the 2021 Outstanding Teacher of American History. Jean Siza teaches students at Palisades Charter High School, Pacific Palisades, California, where she has a legendary reputation as an inspirational teacher. With a teaching career that spans 30 years, this master teacher creates project-based learning and lessons to teach her American history courses. A recipient of numerous awards for exceptional teaching and a mentor for history teacher candidates, Siza shared, quote, I hope to inspire young people with passion and provide them with an understanding of the importance of America's past as it influences who we are as Americans today, end quote. Dr. Pamela McGee, principal, Palisades Charter High School, said of Siza, her devotion to her students' well-being and learning, her passion for American history, and her excitement about inspiring discovery and connections both with her students and colleagues exemplifies her many exceptional qualities as an educator and school leader. Madam President General, it is my pleasure to present the 2021 Outstanding Teacher of American History, Jean Siza, sponsored by the Santa Monica Chapter and the California State Society, Susan Broderick, State Regent. Thank you so much, Madam President General. I am grateful to be here to share my love of history and education with you. I'd also like to express my great deepest gratitude to the Santa Monica chapter and the California Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution for all of their support, their great service to the community and their preservation of our nation's past. Teaching was not my life goal, uh, but I've always had a passion for history. Uh, as I was finishing up my college days as a starving student, I was unsure of my next move. Uh, a fellow student told me about an opportunity to teach American government in English to non-native speakers and that it paid big money. Bills were piling up, so I jumped at the chance. Uh, so with almost no training, I started my teaching career. I fell immediately in love with the power to change lives. After 30 years, my passion and excitement for the job has only grown. Uh, many students arrive at my door saying, it's boring, uh, I don't like history, um, it's too hard. And I take that as a challenge. And I just start them on a journey of discovery about all the intrigue and interrelatedness between the dates and events uh, and hope that they catch the fever. Uh, students ought to be engaged in meaningful and authentic curriculum that connects to their own lives. In the words of Benjamin Franklin, uh, tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. The most important thing I try to do is to know each student. Students must feel valued and recognized for the incredible individuals that they are. And it isn't hard to do. Find out what they like to do outside of class and then incorporate that into the lessons. Send them encouraging notes. Uh, 
send a positive note to the parent to let them know about their student. Uh, once they know that you care about them, they will care about history. In closing, I would like to thank you for this meaningful recognition. I have never stopped being a student of history and education, and I never plan to. I hope to awaken the same kind of passion in my students. And as I reflect on my many years as an educator, I think how lucky I have been to do what I love every day. Thank you. Congratulations, Ms. Seiza and all of the finalists. And we thank you, Mrs. Kessler. Just as these outstanding young people are the future of our nation, so too are junior members the future of our national society. The junior symbol for this administration is a flock of fireflies representing the ways that juniors light up DAR and our lives. The image of our pages in particular illuminating our auditorium during evening sessions, buzzing about in white and brimming with energy and enthusiasm was the inspiration for selecting this symbol. I can hardly wait to see them back in our hall for next year's Congress. Before we recognize the leadership of our junior committee to introduce the finalists in this year's outstanding junior contest, let's take a moment to thank all of our junior members who give so much of themselves to our society at every level. We are so fortunate to benefit from your involvement and we couldn't express the light you bring to us any better than by asking more students at Kate Duncan Smith DAR School to raise their voices in your honor. Thank you, boys and girls, and thank you again to all of our junior members for so brilliantly lighting up DAR and our lives. It is now a pleasure to introduce the National Chair of the Junior Membership Committee, Jean Ellen Melton. Mrs. Melton. Thank you, Mrs. Melton. 
Madam President General, as our society continues to show how we rise and shine, this evening we pause to recognize the future of the National Society, our junior members. These women not only give of their time and their talents at the chapter, state, and national society levels, but they also give countless hours of service to the betterment of their communities. They are daughters, mothers, wives, students, homemakers, and professionals. Tonight, we will highlight how juniors light up our lives by recognizing the many achievements of our state outstanding junior members. This vice chair is in awe of the commitment of our junior members to the National Society and this contest. Each year, chapter outstanding junior members spend hundreds of hours recording their leadership activities, providing proof, tallying points, listing the many aspects of their personal and professional lives and service to their communities. Our junior members are simply amazing, and we can be proud that the future of our society is in their capable hands. This year, 37 states showed how juniors light up our lives and named a state outstanding junior member. Each of these women is to be commended for her service to DAR and to her community. It is exciting to be able to honor each of these impressive ladies and recognize them virtually on this evening of Continental Congress. And the 2021 state winners are from Alabama, Melanie Rose Gates Pepper, a chapter officer and committee chair of the Hunts Spring Chapter. Melanie, with a bachelor's in environmental engineering, is a vice president of operations for an engineering and manufacturing firm and volunteers her time with Global Ties U.S. From Arizona, Shannon Kathleen Garcia. Shannon is a chapter chair for her Tombstone chapter and in addition to working as a certified medical coding specialist, works part-time as an emergency medical technician. From Arkansas, Dina Mariama Chance Reynolds. Dina is an armed security officer while she is earning her bachelor's degree in accounting. From the Frederick Van Patten chapter, she serves as the state corresponding secretary. From California, Colleen Marie Dragovich, registrar of the Covina chapter and state junior shop co-chair, Colleen holds two master's degrees and is a project manager and employment services caseworker for a homeless services agency. From Colorado, Melissa Diane Meehan Cooper, Fort Vasquez chapter officer and state vice chair of junior membership, Melissa is an insurance broker agency operations team lead. From Florida, Nissa Catherine Masters, Holding a Master's of Science in Mechanical Engineering, Nissa from the DeSoto Chapter is a Rehabilitation Engineer at the University of South Florida and has served in multiple State Vice Chair positions. From Georgia, Allison Carol Susanna Shields. An officer for the Colonel William Candler Chapter, Allison is a news anchor and reporter for a local radio station and online news publication. From Idaho, Sarah Sadie Walters. Honorary Chapter Regent of the Alice Whitman Chapter, Sadie is an active senior leader for the Children of the American Revolution and has donated over 2,000 knitted or crocheted items to various organizations. From Illinois, Sophia Helen Keener Gray. Sophia is an attorney in a private client practice group in Chicago where she focuses on estate planning and tax planning and is currently the DeWalt Mecklen Chapter Regent and the State Project Patriot Chair. From Indiana, Lindsay Jane Owens. Currently the State Chair of Junior Membership and Officer of the Francis Vigo Chapter, Lindsay is an editor of the Washington Times Herald in Washington, Indiana. From Maine, Heather Thomas Duby, a member of the Silence Howard Hayden Chapter. Heather is an independent insurance agent and teleservices for a senior planning center. From Maryland, Catherine Amori Hanna. From the Frederick Chapter and Chapter Chair of Junior Membership, 
Katie is the owner of a bookkeeping service specializing in cloud accounting for small businesses and nonprofits. From Massachusetts, Ashley Malone Tanner Cassavant, member of the Hannah Winthrop chapter, Ashley is the co-founder of Fox Hill Heritage Properties, which preserves and protects historic residential properties for future generations. From Minnesota, Rachel Renee Henderson Schwen, a senior R&D chemist working as a color scientist, Rachel is the regent for the Mariah Sanford chapter. From Missouri, Kelly K. Clark, regent of the Elizabeth Benton chapter and national vice chair of the junior membership committee, Kelly is an elementary school art teacher and teaches English as a second language to students in China. From Nevada, Jennifer Danielle Hemphill. From the Red Rock Canyon chapter and state chair of junior membership, Jennifer is an intelligence analyst and consultant where she performs independent investigative research for private investigators, attorneys, and political entities. From New Hampshire, Deirdre Marie Carson. Deirdre is a member of the Molly Stark Chapter, state co-chair of DAR Genealogy Preservation, and is a U.S. Army Counterintelligence Special Agent. From New Jersey, Emily Stever Cadu Kelshen, a member of the Old White House General Freelingheisen Colonel Lowry Chapter, with her Juris Doctor, Emily is the founder and president of a government affairs and legal marketing company. From New Mexico, Krista Marie Tyler. Krista is state chair of junior membership from the Taos Mountain chapter. She works full-time in the financial industry. From Ohio, Angela Marie Cider Wood. Cedar Cliff Chapter Officer, Angela is both an Academic Services Coordinator for Wright State University and an Independent Jewelry Designer on Etsy. From Oklahoma, Megan Runyon, a member of the Samuel King Chapter and State VIS Chair, Megan is a Safety and Training Manager for the Environmental Services Department at OU Health and regularly volunteers with Food on the Move and the Oklahoma Regional Food Bank. From Pennsylvania, Michelle Nicole Mercer Shank. Michelle is a technical writer and editor where she works with a resource management team as a government contractor and is the regent of the Adam Holiday chapter. From Rhode Island, Rebecca Bennett Fairbank. In addition to her roles as the Beacon Pole Hill Chapter Vice Regent and multiple state chair positions, she is a full-time mother to her four children and co-founded and co-manage a women's health organization serving girls and women worldwide. From South Carolina, Anna Gray Hilton McDaniel. Rebecca Mott, Chapter's first Vice Regent, Anna is an attorney where she also offers her time pro bono, assisting veterans navigating the complexity of VA loans. From South Dakota, Allison Ann Denault Dvorak. Allison is an architect while honing her master's thesis of researching and implementing design theories and is from the Mary Chilton chapter. From Texas, Laura Ames Harding. State Co-Chair of Constitution Week and La Vieta Chapter Officer, Laura is a kennel technician and is a recipient of the Mayor's Award for the cities of Bryan and College Station. From Utah, Erin Suzanne Burns, an officer of the Salt Lake Valley Chapter and State Chair of Multiple Committees, Erin is a preservation specialist for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints History Department at the Granite Mountain Records Vault. From Washington, Jamie Lynn Miller. In addition to serving as a chapter chair and officer for the Annie Pulliam chapter, Jamie is a certified athletic trainer and adjunct professor in exercise science. 
from Wisconsin, Jessica Ray Radke Punzel. Jessica is a fifth generation baker of a hundred year old family business and is the state Americanism chair from the Fort Atkinson Eli Pierce chapter. A panel of three judges reviewed each of the 37 applications to determine the eight national finalists, national runner-up, and national winner. The 2021 national finalists represent an immense amount of dedication to God, home, and country, and indeed are each outstanding women. This year's unanimously selected eight national finalists are... From the District of Columbia, Rebecca Christina Ho, Chapter Regent of the Martha Washington Chapter and State Membership Chair, Rebecca works as a civil servant at the Federal Election Commission. She is currently serving as both a National Vice Chair of the Property, Beautification, and Hospitality Committee and as a National Vice Chair of Pages. From Iowa, Brianna Jo McDougal Johnson. Brianna is a Deshaun Chapter Officer and has previously served as Chapter Regent. As an active duty and National Guard Army veteran, and while serving as Iowa's first DAR Celebrate America State Chair, she reviewed photos and captions on the national website submitted nationwide by DAR members leading to the adoption of her five children through foster care. From Louisiana, Lauren Hall Porchot Durr. From the Alexander Sterling Chapter and an active senior leader for the Children of the American Revolution, Lauren is a Coastal Resources Program Specialist where she assists with contract management of 12 environmental services contracts. In addition to serving as the DAR School Division Vice Chair, she serves as the State First Vice Regent. From Nebraska, Jennifer Ann Miner. As an assistant supervisor in the PIC Department for Oriental Trading, Jennifer serves as the state chair of VIS. She has served as a chapter officer of the Major Isaac Sadler La Bellevue chapter and served her state in numerous capacities as a state chair of multiple committees and is an active senior leader for the children of the American Revolution. From New York, Alicia Megan Siegel. Alicia is the lead teaching artist for the Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum, a historical interpreter for the New York Historical Society, and an independent playwright and performer. In addition to currently serving as the Brooklyn Chapter Regent and the State VIS Chair, she was named the 2020 New York State Outstanding Chapter Regent. From North Carolina, Jennifer Elizabeth Malding Alcarez Cristobal, an officer of the Cross North Chapter and State Chair of Junior Membership, Jennifer also reorganized the Cross North Society Children of the American Revolution. She is a longtime volunteer for the Cross North School and serves as a Hispanic ministry helper at St. Elizabeth's Catholic Church. From Tennessee, Aubrey Ann Williams. In addition to being named an honorary chapter regent of the Sarah Polk chapter, Aubrey has earned dual master's degrees and is a full-time financial advisor. As a graduate of West Point, she continually volunteers by attending college fairs and academy days for congressmen and senators to recruit highly qualified local students for the U.S. military academies. She is currently serving the National Society as National Chair for the DAR Magazine. From Virginia, Sarah Marie Bope, Chapter Regent of the Fort Loudoun Chapter, Sarah also serves as the State Vice Chair of Junior Membership. In addition to her service with Red Cross Blood Drives, she has added over 250 photos to memorials through the Find a Grave website and served as the organizing and senior society president of the Lawrence Augustine Washington Society Children of the American Revolution. She currently works within the U.S. Department of Justice.
Recognizing such outstanding young women is always a highlight of any Continental Congress. Congratulations to all of you, and thank you, Jean Ellen and Melissa. Chapter Leadership, please engage your junior members in our work in the year ahead and seek out new juniors in your community to join. Often they are waiting only to be invited. These young women represent our future. It's certainly been a wonderful evening, and I am so glad that you were a part of it. Thanks for logging on and sharing the joy of it all. In fact, I hope that you are attending as many sessions and events during our virtual 130th Continental Congress as possible. Tomorrow morning, we'll feature reports of the remainder of the state regions and the nomination of candidates for the offices of Vice President General and Honorary Vice President General. And trust your President General, you will not want to miss tomorrow evening's celebration of the restoration of DAR Constitution Hall. It begins at 7 o'clock Eastern. After a year of construction and several days of our raising suspense over its outcome, I promise you that the big reveal will be well worth the wait. Ladies, you will be so proud of our shared commitment to this historic auditorium. From the subfloor to the superstructure, we have left a legacy for generations to come. Thousands of you have played a starring role in the next act, so please come out to shine. Our meeting is recessed until tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Good night.